Oh, I take Rabbit right here. Uh, I continue the 3D printer build and the um, assembly of the E-axis. And this is part three. So let's get into it. So, okay, so even if it says E-axis build is actually step 46, which is X-axis build parts. So I'm going to put the X-axis belt in. And we well, need the actual belt. And actually, it says on it also. Oh, wait. Oh, good. So we need to get it pushed into uh, into this hole there. And I think that's going to be a, a bit fiddly, and I need to make sure that I put it in the right way around. Also, Let's see. Is it supposed to go? Oh, the picture is not so good. Ah, oh, but I can. Ah, oh, has to be this way around. So that means the um, soft end up, because this has to go around the spindles. Okay, it's gonna take a while. So Let's get that done. So now I got it threaded in there and then it goes round and comes down a bit. So that should be okay. I'm going to change the camera angle so we can actually see the next phase. Okay, now I need to insert it around the pulley. Oh, and it needs to continue through into that hole. It's locked. So, I'm going to make sure that this screw here is as loose as possible. And then we loosen up the rest of the screws that we had tightened before. So, so now this motor can move freely. And then we push it so that it gives the maximum. Or actually we can maybe we can tighten it into place. Oops. So that it's the maximum towards the or giving the maximum belt looseness. So now we've got to thread the belt through. Doesn't it want to go through? No. 
Ah, that's so strange. The easiest job in the world. I don't think belts like me that much. <laughs> yeah, finally. As I said, it should have been the easiest thing to do in this. So, come back over the spindle and push it back. Oh, it's so out of line. I'm going to have to correct it. If you see the... Oh, you can't maybe see it from that angle. <laughs> oh, this spindle is very, very offline. Okay, the spindle was the wrong way around, so that, that explains it. <laughs> Why it was so... Long. But anyway, it was... Uh, in the original X-axis instruction was just to put it in without tightening it, so... Was just to take it and turn it around. So that's um, step 48 done. And then, yeah, I've done this already partially. It was to uh, release the tension on the motor, uh, unscrew those two screws. Um, or all three screws, loosen them up, make sure that the tightening screw is uh, as loose as possible. And, um, so... And then we need to put it in here. It comes back. And that will be a little bit of a fiddly job again. So that's how we'll take this and try and get it in there as best I can. Okay, not the easiest thing to do, but anyway, it goes around the belt and then one should try and hold on to this while it's while it's um, flopping <laughs> and push hold the belt tight and this in position while putting this in the groove so the one gets some base tension here so that's done and then one should oh try to get a pitch better picture video and then the next step is to move the motor back into position which isn't actually that much and then one should check it shouldn't be floppy on its own weight and feel reasonably tense let's see if you are struggling to rotate the motor back into position the belt tension is too high well, I don't say I was struggling. I mean, I can just struggling and struggling, but I mean, I can just click it into place. So I suppose one could say that. But that's um. Ah, I would say that's so. And this, I mean, this feels okay. And this is not um. I if they have a check of that. Oh, that's the spindle realignment and check is coming later. But anyway, I would consider that. That to be okay, so let's get this tightened up. Take my screwdriver. I suggest one tightens this one up first, even if they are against that a little bit. So Now belts always need to be some. They need to be checked periodically and readjusted, and sometimes e even renewed, because they do tend to wear out and stuff. 
Okay, so that would be that phase. That was step 50. And then 51 is to try and uh, align the spindle. Just hidden by the video. Okay, I should align the spindle, and that means that it wants the both belts to be running uh, in parallel on top of each other, so this is the best way that I've found to do it, is to move the extruder as far away as one can, and then one uses the straight edge along here, and one just looks and sees if the belt is running in parallel, if they're running on top of each other in a straight line, so, and then visually inspect the spindles. So I think we can um, tighten up the screw. Uh, one. So, it's both of them tight. So that's um, step 51. And then you should test it also, which I don't really. I mean, you putting a pair of pliers on the axle is not my idea. Not really a nice idea. You could damage the axle. So I think the one can use one's fingers. And just feel. So hold on to, hold on to this. And one feels what's the interaction when I'm trying to turn. And if it feels like that this one moves exactly in the same movement as this one, just double check on. The, oh, I think that's. I mean, they, it's all a bit flimsy, but well, I think that's okay. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, and now we need to cut the belt, so reposition everything again. Okay, now I should mark it with a white pen and then cut it, but I think it's actually might be easier to cut it in place. So, now we have quite good snippers, so I think this will work quite well. feel very tight. No one should con confirm that it feels relatively good and the alignment's okay. So that's step um, 53 and then 54 is fine-tuning the x-axle belt and basically that has to do with um,
this trimming. Ugh. I wonder if it would actually be easier if I just take. Oh, no. It's to use this to have these loose and then feel the tension and then adjust with this screw. But I already cheated a bit by I'm doing that in advance. But you basically, it's a. F I suppose that you know some people when they want to cut it, they take the belt out again and then they put the belt back in again or something like that. Right. I don't. No, step fifty four seems to be like. Yeah, I think you need step 54 if one didn't do the trick that I did, but, you know, doing everything a little bit at the same time. So then you should, but I mean, you should probably just do a, in, in step 54, I would suggest you just do a double check on, on your tightening and assembly. Make sure everything's okay. So, um, so far, so good, I hope. Let's go back to that one. So, what have we done? We started the belt here. We wrapped it around. Um, we've pre tightened it and then extra tightened it by the, the spindles being aligned. The screws have been tightened. Whew! So many steps. I think they were okay. Okay, now it's going to be more cable management. So it'll be step 55 nylon guide. So, I should take this nylon, clean in the package. And should cut off a relatively short point on it and then um, you know, make sure it flies away from you and use glasses, safety glasses so, so we get that kind of a cut okay. and then we need to see it from this angle so we need to insert it. So it needs to go in that hole there. Let's see if I can get the camera a bit better position. That's <laughs> always oh, so much light from everywhere. This one and should again hold on to this screw and I mean they say to use pliers to push it in but I don't know exactly why why that would be the case. Because this is relatively tough filament. Well, it certainly doesn't want to stay in there. Okay, they want you to push it in and twist it, so that's why. While holding the extruder and making sure nothing breaks. Oh. Ah, okay, so they might have made some kind of a thread in there. That's why they want to tw have it twisted. Okay, well, that seems to be good enough. One shouldn't use excessive force. 
They're all plastic bits and bolt. Okay, so I think that we could say that that's done. Okay, now we're going to be preparing a few parts. So that's step 57 X carriage back parts preparation. Okay, and we need to prepare the cable holder assembly. So that's that one. And the one with the bigger hole. And just take the screw. And oh, try and push it through. Like that. And there's going to be a nut. to go in to there. Oh, I think I need to do a pulling trick on that one also. Okay, use the screw pulling method. And then just make sure it's really in this case that it's embedded in where it's supposed to be so it doesn't interfere with the bearing. Check the alignment. So just check that it's aligned with the hole. Oh, like that. So, okay, now we have that one. Now there's going to be some tricky cable management. So, now we should start with this. So, I recommend. Start with this side. Try to straighten these up a bit and untangle them. Something like that. I think do, we open up this, this side here. First, that hole from the back.
Coming through something like that. So and then what's the cables on the other side? Top, I suppose. Step sixty. And the hot end cables aren't to go through this. Okay, need to do sixty one, X carriage back plate assembly, and we need four ten millimeter screws. Sure, no cables are pinched. Oh. Oh, I know what they mean because the more closer we bring this, the tighter it is on the cables. <laughs> I was filming from the wrong side. Well, let's see, there's going to be one in the middle, so let's try and start with that one. If it even finds a place. So I'm gonna have to fiddle it into place. Okay, got the middle one in. So I'll just make sure that it's aligned at the top, like horizontally, and then vertically check that they match at the edges. It's not a completely perfect fit, but um, we'll see how the rest of the screws go in. And here's the screws that we need to go in. Let's 
three ten. This one is not gripping at all. I can actually probably take it out of my finger. Not so good. Well, not exactly. But you can't screw it in. Next one, let's see if this one grips better. I'm gonna have to double double check the Okay, that seems to grip in much better. No, no one. Ah, now. Okay. So it wasn't reaching the nut. I think there's a nut behind there. I would have to double check all of <laughs> the instructions. And the, okay, but now, now it gripped. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And then the last one. This one will go in. Oh, and it still moves. So, so far so good. And then we need to move on with... So anyway, putting in the screws was step 61, and now we're on 62. Textile sleeves, ports, preparation. Okay, that's this one that came with the package, the longest one, the thickest one. So we need that, and then we need four zip ties. Like that. And then we need to move on to the next. Thought that would this create a better contrast to filming? It's messed up with all kinds of dark. Oh, can I understand? Ah. 
Mm, take this. And this is the odd thing that it seems to have been cut with something hot because this is actually tied together there, like melted. I think something hot's been used to cut this material. So, but it does say open it, so I'm going to actually snip it. It seems to be all round, so anyway, now it's. Now it's kind of open. Uh, can I see? Okay, this is the way I understand it. this around. Whoops, not the necessarily the easiest thing to get on. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I need to wrap everything. Okay, and then we should use the zip ties. And then we should be pushed through the holes. There should be three of them. Black on black again. Oh, look. Twist it as neat as we can. I think I'll start with this one. Ah, put them the wrong way around. 
classical mistake. That one's still correct, and that one's oh, so I only did that. Pull out it too much. Okay, next one. <laughs> I just couldn't get that gap closed. It's that simple. Oh, it's just have to be. Oops. To leave it. Mean anything mechanically? Mm. Nobody can see behind the printer anyway. But I would have uh, would have liked to have those. The this wrap somehow I just couldn't get it to um, to go up to the end there properly. So that's done. I think I must have done something wrong. No, I've done it correctly because there's two rows of slots in the... Okay, well I used the lower ones for that and the top ones for the bottom. So the positioning seems to be relatively important for one reason or another. But according to the instructions. but it's actually for the lower cables. Okay, so far so good. Cables. Get prepared for that. Okay, now we have a little bit better view. Some coffee. Cold. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. to unwrap the modern cables. So, that's that collection. That's the healing block. I would not like to have them close to that. It's got to be above the nozzle. They don't actually show how the cable should be rooted in relation to the actual hood end. Maybe there's a bit of an indication that it goes at an angle. Picture, no, no, no picture from that specific angle. Okay, I'm going to have to have a little bit more look at that. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So uh, there seems to be a channel here underneath where they would like the wires to go. Now these can stand heat, so those can be up against the heat block coming across. Thermistor wires, they should be able to handle the heat, but I'd still like them to uh, point with this instead. Come out on the outside on top of the power feed and then out into here and then connected there. So, you know, I didn't find any uh, picture from from below. And the thing is that you should also make sure I have the book here to block the light from the window because otherwise it's blinding the cam. Uh, let's see. To make sure you actually have the horizontal clearance between the top of the extruder here, or the bottom of the extruder, so, this, so that these will not foul your print or anything and get in the way. So make sure they're tucked up and held in place. So, anyway, that was research I thought I'd do. So, back to this, now we need to sneak the hook down. Oh, so probably cut off the... Um, so, done. We need to sneak these cables in, not to a violent angle, so that they can join the other cables. want this angle to be too violent so they just have to like flow into 
Into the side, man. Like that. Yeah, not the most prettiest solution, but that's the way it's in the manual, also. And basically, just say that it should flow in to the um, sock. Okay. Um, doesn't say about if we should put this hole, if we should continue putting these cables in. Well, there's no, there's no picture of that. But I mean, this final picture, it shows the cables like the whole way in. So I think I'll do that, and then I will also, and I recommend that you actually compare with the picture, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sit down for a while, look at the picture and look at what we have, and um, see what's on. So putting cables totally in, double checking with the picture, and the E-axis is done. finish the e-axis so that'll be one video that was three parts wow 66 steps I think it was 66 yeah 66 steps uh, so if you enjoyed this video um, consider uh, subscribing hit the bell icon for more because there is more to build and um, you know tell other people if they're trying to put one of these together or thinking about putting one of these things together and um, I'll see you in the next one.